Ladies and gentlemen, I'm 101 Chris, that's Hollywood Perry, and this is WR Weekly, the official show for everything WR. Whether you're live with us tonight on Twitch or you're just catching up on YouTube, thanks for stopping by. If you're stumbling onto this and you're new to WR, make sure to follow us on Twitter at WR Pro Am League and at WR Select. Uh, Perry, man, welcome. Hey, man. Listen, listen, I am very excited for WR Weekly, man. So like you said, I want to welcome everyone, man. We have a, a jam-packed show for you guys tonight. Going to be fun. Uh, get ready. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be dope, man. And, and this is actually, for those, uh, like, we'll just let people in on a little secret here. This is the first time I'm actually getting really to meet and talk to Perry. We're getting introduced to each other on this show. We don't really know too much of each other, um, but uh, I think this is the start of a, a good relationship. And man, I'm, I'm really thankful that you, 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 you came on and to kind of help unveil everything for us. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Uh, Lux uh, has this thing where he calls me the Swiss army knife. Uh, <laughs> I pretty much do everything regardless in terms of WR. So I'm always willing to help, always willing to uh, – in whatever you guys need. So whenever you want me on here, just let me know, and I'll come. No problem. No awesome. Problem. And I'm, I'm going to need to get one of those shirts that you're wearing too, that WR. Yes, sir, man. You know WR, man. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get things started. I mean, what is WR Weekly? It's going to be – I mean, your only platform that you'll really need to kind of keep up to date on everything in the WR, you know, sphere, whether it's WR League, WR Open, WR Select. We're going to be bringing on players, coaches, GMs, uh, contributors, leaders, basically everybody that helps make up this community. And, and let's put the spotlight on them, right? So along the way, we'll also recap the latest results. Again, everything that you really need. You know, Perry, what are, what are you kind of excited for as we enter this post-draft uh, cycle? I mean, I, it's always every post-draft we have a – we have I really want to say unknown, but we have an under-the-radar player that steps up and shows out, and I'm just waiting to see who takes that mantle this year uh, and try to shoot their shot for the league. Uh, but, you know, uh, like we always say, WR is the stepping stone to the league, so we hope that everyone uh, is tuning in, showing up to show out, uh, especially with UPA, like, like they tweeted from the page the other day. It's a lot of stuff that uh, that goes on behind the scenes that they don't know. So I just hope that everyone's tuning in and uh, locking in for this post drive. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, the, the, the Pro-Am scene is always evolving, always changing. Obviously, the latest twist and turn um, with that is the Unified uh, Pro-Am Association. Um, there's going to be a lot for us to kind of cover, um, which is always a good problem to have. Uh, before we get started and bring in our guests tonight, um, just a quick reminder that the Season 29 PlayStation WR Finals and the Season 20 Xbox Finals will be held live in less than a week. Man, the PS5 Championship this Sunday, April 25th, 9.30 Eastern, and then 24 hours later on Monday, April 26, the Xbox finalists will duke it out for the crown. Uh, it's going to be exciting. After both of these championship games wrap up, we're going to hit an inaugural landmark. Perry, I'm talking season 50. Did you ever think yeah. we would get to this point? Man, when I first, when I first got brought in um, uh, season four, I want to say it was season three or four, I I never thought that it was gonna be this big, this huge. Uh, I never I never in a million years thought it could be this. And like I, I used to tweet all the time, like just to watch the growth that we've made from there to now is amazing in itself. And I but I something I never could expect it. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. Again, anytime you can hit a landmark um, with whatever project is, it's always again amazing. So uh, without <laughs> further ado, um, let's bring in our our guests uh, tonight. We have legit gaming gm of the san juan cokies uh, our w wr select playstation champions and then with him as well is elite steals one of the players on the squad uh fellas thank you for stopping by on the first ever uh, installment of wr weekly man of course of course great to be here thank you guys for having me uh, really excited to talk a little bit about wr select um our championship season and talk a little bit about our doubters so i can't wait to talk about our doubters man thank you guys for having me it's a pleasure man thank you guys for having me also you know uh, legit <clears throat> me and legit go way back that's that's literally like my little brother in the community man i don't know so about my little brother 
<laughs> he wants to be the big brother, but he's a little brother. So uh, we have a uh, no, we have a very good relationship. So uh, through this season, it's been fun. I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of that he won. Uh, he deserved it. Uh, he was a hell of a GM. Made some trades, made some deals, got the players uh, going. Uh, so uh, he, he definitely deserved it. Uh, I definitely doubted his GM skill at the beginning. Oh, so you're one of the doubters then? Yeah, yeah I was. Yeah. That's why he said yeah. it like that. Okay. I, was, I was definitely one of the doubters. Uh, but man, uh, I, I talked about it on the uh, post draft scope. Taking a lock such as Elite Steals, I mean, he was the best lock in the combine in the draft by far. But taking Elite Steals in the first round instead of a point guard when there are still point guards on the board uh, was kind of crazy to me. But Elite Steals lived up to the hype. <laughs> I mean, so he, I, he fought the billing, man. It was crazy to watch him literally lock in and lock, lock and disrupt offenses was crazy. So they just kind of get things rolling here. Then legit, I'll just kind of throw my first question to you, and mm-hmm. then I'll get to you, Steals. You know, in that outside noise, right? Whether it's coming from Perry or I'm sure from other sources as well. Um, what's kind of going through your mind as you're approaching draft day and you you have an idea that you're going to be grabbing a lock first round you know outside voices might be telling you to go in opposite mm-hmm. direction what's going through your mind as you eventually lock in on, on your choice and, oh. and how do you stay true to yourself in that process oh that's a great question i mean I, I interviewed a lot of players um i definitely spoke to some pgs out there uh looking at the draft board though i was i was uh third pick i believe i was third yeah, pick yeah. I was fifth pick and looking at the fifth, looking where I was at fifth and I was looking at the PGs that I knew was going to go ahead of my pick. And I, and I saw the rest of the PGs that were out there and I didn't see anybody that, that really caught my eye. And, and uh, if you look at uh, speaking with elite, who was my uh, first pick in MGL when we was running hit it on when, when we was in MGL, which is another draft league, he was my first pick there. And I knew his, I knew his attitude and how he approached the game. So I spoke with elite and me and elite agreed that, uh, we were going to come over to, you know, WR Select and kind of do the same thing. So speaking with Elite and knowing that he could box a lot of these point guards in the draft, um, I said, you know what, I'm going to not listen to everybody and I'm going to go with my gut feeling. I spoke with my uh, I had an assistant, Jan Marsh, and we agreed that uh, Steels would be the perfect person. We spoke to Steels, Steels was on board, and that just makes it so much easier when the person who you want to take is on board with your plan mm-hmm. and knowing that that person is going to load up. And I think in draft leagues, that's the key having that player load up or want to load up. So speaking with Elite, he agreed, and we just trust the process after that. Knew that I knew what I was doing, and we kind of got going. And it's crazy. Uh, I call it uh, maybe, what was it, like two or three days before the draft? Mm -hmm. And, like, he told me, he was like, bro, if Elite's on the board, if Elite's on the board, when is my pick? I'm taking him. I'm like, it doesn't matter who's there. He's like, it doesn't matter. That's, That's my pick. And... I'm like, no way. Like, I'm thinking he's lying to me, you know? Like, he's not going to give me <laughs> inside scoop. But he's like, bro, if that's my – if that's if he's on the board when it's my pick, like, that's what I'm taking. And he went with his gut, and he was rewarded for it. Yeah. Now, uh, Elite, um, let's bring you into this. First off, congrats on, on your WR Select championship, man. Um, you know, just hearing kind of this talk, did you know already – I mean – like obviously you must have had an idea that you'd be selected if you were available, but knowing that you are a lock being taken early, I mean, forget WR for a second. Let's, you know, NBA 2K league, anytime a point guard is not taken in that first round, it's always going to kind of raise some eyebrows. You being a lock, did that come with any added pressure being taken that high? No, not at all. I wasn't worried about it. I know I can box every point guard in the league easily. (laughs) That's awesome, and as you're as the you know the highlight package is kind of playing, um, just a and I think those are the LA traffic highlights uh, as we head to the producer in the truck there. Um, so we'll get that adjusted here in a second, but kind of just moving on uh, as we get there. We go the Cokies package coming up. Um, just talking about your defensive ability, steals man. Just watching that final series. Even if nobody had any idea of your path to the finals, you guys could see you had a a certain defensive approach, a certain scheme that revolved around containing seldom. Um, Just talk a little bit about the team's defensive approach that night. It was make seldom score because I know he's not a scorer like that. He liked to pass the ball. 
So I was like basically sit well on Seldom and just make him score the ball on me. And it was hard for him. Yeah, I mean, you guys dropped that first game, right? Did you like, what were some of the key adjustments that you guys had to make collectively and on the fly? It was just like, BK always has a bad first game, right? So I wasn't worried about it really. He just came in, stepped in and did his job. And the whole team did the thing too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Perry, do you have anything to add? Nah, <clears throat> I was just I was just listening to him speak. Uh, it just it, it's crazy how humble he is. Like he he he's a little cocky. Like I can box every point guard, but <laughs> like like but he's still humble with it. Like like man, like we got to do the work. Like the work comes first. Like so, and it, it just his attention to detail. Like because a lot right. of people in the community don't realize that you don't have to play that high on Seldon. So, I mean, just him his attention to detail, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And him being able to play hash and uh, allow them to run the triangle when they could, it, it was, I mean, it was a difference maker on their team. So, legit, mm -hmm. you know, you made a big trade this season. You uh, traded for uh, range. Right. So, uh, are you coming back next season is the question. It's the first question. Oh, man. Um, that's a <laughs> great question. Good way, to, good, good way to throw me on the spot. <laughs> I mean, if, if – if the two people that I want to retain come come back, then def I would definitely be back. Um, if not, I'm definitely I'm still thinking about coming back, but it, it will help if the two people I want to retain are definitely coming back. So so so, um, so what if I so what if I change the rule to you can only retain one? Who you retaining? Ranger still. Wow. Wow. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm definitely gonna retain my my guy Steels. I gotta bring Steels back. Uh, okay. Range is a dog. Don't get me wrong. And Range uh, trading for Range might have been the Zen master in me. I call it. Uh, I, I saw Range was out there. I knew the team was slumping, and I said, you know, I saw that they, that team needed some help somewhere. A uh, big shout out to the two people I traded. Um, big shout out to uh, to um, Cam Dino, man. He was a hell of a player. He helped us win a couple games early in the season uh, at point guard. He played a lot of point guard in the beginning while BK was out, and then when BK got back on, Cam Dino moved to shooting guard and even won us a couple games at the hash. So big shout out to Cam Dino for the amazing play. Uh, it was hard trading him, but when you could get a talent like Range out at the power forward position. Why not, right? He's a game changer in the power forward. Uh, he makes Steele's life even easier. Not that Steele's needed much help, but if you get Steele's a little bit of help on defense, man, that just that just changes the game. Um, and then, like Steele said, when you have a point guard uh, like BK, who BK was slept on, nobody knew who BK was. And, <laughs> I and I was so excited to know that nobody knew about BK. I knew about BK. Um, of course, I did my homework. Uh, and I was telling people, you know, don't sleep on BK. He was the last pick of the draft of my – he was my last pick. And and he came out, and every night he came in and dropped buckets for us. But, again, you know, couldn't have done it without um, Cam. Cam, again, shout-outs to Cam, man. Uh, it's tough to trade somebody like that, but at the end of the day, it's a business. Yeah, definitely. definitely. For sure. I, it, just kind of going back to you, legit. Um, just talk a little bit about – because. I mean, yeah, there's tons of leagues out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you, you you pay a registration fee, you bring your own your own team, your own family, mm -hmm. your own guys. There's that built-in chemistry. Just talk a little bit about the challenges that come with putting together a draft team mm -hmm. and not just your any average team, but like a team that's capable of winning it all like, like you did. Draft leagues are tough, man. Um, and I always say that the most, like, you never know what you're going to get out of a draft league. You can either have a great team, you can have the worst team, and then you're sitting there, like, fighting with people to load up. <laughs> but I think the most important thing and, and what we were, what I was able to do, uh, and I've learned from mistakes in the past and also successes, is just be honest with the guys on your team. You know, I told the guys, I said, all we got to do is, is, is get is get to the playoffs. And we have a solid group. I spoke with every single one of them. I scouted. Uh, and also, you want to you want to listen to your players. A lot of GMs just draft names, uh, and it's not about drafting names. You got to talk to your guys. So when I took Steels and Steels knew he was coming, Steels, who who who? What's here's the centers I like. What center works best with you? I'm not just gonna take any center, but what center you think will fit? Who you want? Um, and then that's how I'll go about it. I always go about it. Um, in a sense of how can we pair up people that fit with what we got going on. Uh, there was a lot of players that I that might have been better than some players that I t that I may have taken in the draft. But you know what? I went with what I thought would work best with what we were building. Um, and I told the guys, we're going to be a defensive first team. We're going to get a lot of stops and we're going to score off our stops. Uh, and nobody thought, again, when I had beat when, when the, after the draft, people said, who's your point guard? And I said, well, BK is my point guard. People were like, who the heck is BK? Well, you guys were able to find out towards the end of the season, man. Definitely, definitely.
That's funny. Uh, Steels, just kind of coming back to you, man. Like you averaged over 13 points a game in that final uh, matchup uh, in the championship. You shot over 50% from deep, just over a steal a game. Um, you were taking fifth overall. So there were four other teams that passed on you. Did you did you interview with any other teams and did you think that you might end up going uh, elsewhere uh, as you approach the draft? No, I didn't have any interviews, but legit really. And I thought they would pick me because of my accolades I have in Pro-Am, but they didn't. They went with other point guards, and I wasn't worried. So it did pick me, and it made it easier. Yeah, that's awesome. Talk about just your season in general, man. Like, just your overall experience with WR Select. Um, you know, some of the highs, some of the lows, you know. Um, yeah, just talk about your overall experience and, and how the season was for you. At first, I didn't agree with it with trade, really. Because <laughs> I went because Cam Dino... Cause Cam Dino was a great start, but it was like it was hard because I didn't want to really play halves like that on my build. I have right, but I did it and he traded Cam Dino and got range, and range was a big difference maker on the court when we played. But I guess that's 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 part of the relationship, right? Legit, just like being able to get that feedback from your team, yeah. from your rosters because they're the ones locking in and, and then being able to collaborate with them effectively. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget. Uh spoke with I always again I always speak with the players so I spoke with Steel Steel was like eh, you know I don't know if we want to lose Cam Dino uh then I just pulled the trigger I said you know what I know this is the right move told the chat yo um <laughs> Range is here and and the chat was like whoa 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 like not because Range was here but because we were losing Cam Dino at Sharp I think that's what really, uh, but once I, you know, I rallied the troops again, I told them Steels was going to be good at the hash. I said, you got this. Um, and that, that kind of took, it, it took its course from there. That's awesome. That's great. Did you, I guess really just last question for me, um, you talk about that defensive identity that you wanted to establish with the team. Was it something that initially, because I, I just caught on at the tail end of the season, right? I was able to catch you guys towards the playoffs and in your championship run. Was that defensive identity something that formed right off the bat, or was it something that had to evolve along the way? Um, it definitely was something that evolved. I mean, we would get uh, steals would get stops, but I think the swing is always important and trusting that somebody was going to swing for you. Um, at, again, in the beginning of the season, we had Cam Dino running point guard. Uh, we had a couple different players in there. We had Pilsby running power forward, which isn't really his position. Um, we had, you know, Pilsby plays more of a lock position, so him at the power forward wasn't really his thing. Uh, we had Tristan playing power forward, who Tristan's not a power forward either. So I had two power forwards who didn't really, they were both locks playing power forward. Um, so they had to kind of adjust. And then by the middle of the season, we, we switched some things up and tried it out. And then when we got range, it was an, uh, it was just a perfect fit. You know, Tristan finally adapted to the power forward position. Buddha is a hell of a center. Um, I think him and Steels connected very well, but he, him and BK also connected on offense, which really, really helped. The fact that, again, everything takes time, and that's why I told them, just because we have a bad start, don't, don't, don't think about it like that. Think about it as, as long as we get enough wins where we're in the playoffs, we're good, because we, we started picking up. After that, after that trade happened, we didn't even get to play a regular season with range, a game with range. Mm -hmm. So it was just, we ran into the playoffs, and it was just like, this is trial by fire. Um, and we, we started first, even in the playoffs, we were down almost, I think every series. So I think us just gelling and figuring it out together, taking time day by day and we got it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, Perry, uh, any final thoughts or final questions before we let these boys go? Nah, man. <clears throat> I just want to say once again, congratulations, legit. Yes. Elite and the entire Coca's organization. Uh, you guys had a hell of a season, uh, legit, you want your gut and it really worked out for you. You know, I'm I'm uh, proud of you, you know, you know, man, you know how we rock, bro. Congrats. Congrats again to uh, Elite Steels and the rest of the Coca's organization. Uh, I hope to see you guys back next season uh, because, you know, I'm still going to talk my trash. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the Cokies will talk it over, man. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yes, Congrats again, guys. Thanks for coming on to the show. Um, cool. We'll head off to a, a very, very quick break. So keep it locked in with us. This is WR Weekly. Over the years, we've seen leagues scamming you out of money, not paying out as advertised, operating illegally, and most importantly, not doing their part to promote you and your team when you've accomplished the feat. You win and it doesn't move your draft stock a bit. We're working together to bring an official structure to the Pro-Am community called the UPA. 
Unified Program Association. We will have UPA certified leagues. Here are the benefits of playing in a UPA certified league. First, UPA certified leagues offer guaranteed payouts as advertised. WR, MPBA, and later Prestige Area and their affiliate leagues have served the community since 2015. We've seen dozens of leagues create a Twitter, provide a cash app, and disappear overnight. UPA certified leagues are safe. There is no reason you should have to play three or more finals in one night. The UPA will take into consideration for all NBA 2K League qualifying events. There may be overlap, but we will do what we can to limit it. There is often confusion among league rules. The UPA will have a clear set of rules across the board. Also, you cheat in one, you will be banned from them all. The risk to cheat is higher than ever. This will create a way safer and cleaner competitive pro-am experience. UPA certified leagues offer the most direct connection to the next level. When you play in UPA leagues and tournaments, it's guaranteed you will have the attention of scouts, coaches, and GMs at the next level. UPA certified leagues have zero tolerance for discrimination based on race, gender, national origin, religion, or sexual orientation. Anyone in violation will be brought before a council and require sensitivity training or face a lifetime ban from all UPA leagues. Last, we've heard your ideas to have one unified national pro am champion, and we're answering the call. That's right, one true amateur champion. Beginning in the post draft, you'll only be able to turn entry into the national pro am championship from events hosted by UPA certified leagues. Winners of these events will automatically qualify for the national championship tournament and at large bids will be awarded based on NAP's innovative legacy leaderboard scoring system applied only to UPA leagues. Welcome back everyone. This is WR Weekly. Again, a quick thank you to the WR Select PlayStation Season 6 champions, uh, San Juan Cokies. That was legit gaming, the GM of the organization, and then Elite steals their lock. Uh, Perry, before we kind of get wrapped up here, I think we have to kind of talk about a, a couple things. One, the WR finals, right, that are coming yeah. up next week. Uh, yes, absolutely huge. Season 29. Sunday and Monday at 930. Yeah, Season 29, PlayStation, Season 20, Xbox, and... I, I we have to especially highlight this. It's on a very specific date at a very specific time. Talk a little bit about you know why that is the case and why that's so important. Um, I don't really know how much I can say, but um, we're trying to help bring structure to the program community. So we uh, so we picked the date, uh, and we're gonna have our finals on uh Monday and Sunday on Sunday and Monday both mm -hmm. at nine thirty p.m. on uh, PlayStation. On Sunday, Xbox on Monday, and um, but yeah, so this is the first step towards structure in the community. Uh, it's it's very much needed because uh, like we said, like especially the UPA ad, the, man, there's no reason why we, you guys should be up playing until five a.m. Uh, playing four or five different finals in one night, like that's absurd. Like because like WR closes at one a.m., so if you guys are playing that late, there's no one here to help you, you know. So then we have situations where we gotta. Uh, either go to try to give forfeits or whatever to try to work out the difference between you guys uh, that next morning. So we're just trying to cut that out as much as we can so that way we can get stuff done that night. Uh, that's like the biggest thing. Um, also, like I said, bring structure. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, on Sunday and Monday, uh, we're going to be uh, broadcasting that as well. So uh, look into that. We're going to have Coach Jay on the mic, I think. Uh, I'm not never really sure who's going to be broadcasting that, but we're going to be broadcasting that as well. Maybe you're going to be on that, Chris. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, you know, as someone who, like, from the outside looking in, why I think this is a, a tremendous kind of amount of progress for, for the community is, you know, you look at all the other examples of esports, whether it's League of Legends, Call of Duty, or even scrims, basic scrims on Call of Duty, they're all you know, scheduled, they're all timed. Yeah. And, and that's intentional because you want as many eyeballs on, on, on the product as possible. Um, you want viewers, you want people, you know, generating excitement. And, you know, the NBA finals, 
you know, wouldn't be like, oh yeah, we're going to hold it on Sunday, but we don't know what time it's going to be. So just kind of yeah. tune in whenever that's never a thing. And so this is a great step just to kind of getting that structure, as you said, and just creating a, a, a legitimacy, right? Just having that legitimacy and, and, and structure feel to it is, is, is awesome. And, um, that, and that's why we've been so, and like, that's why we've been so strict with uh, everybody, everything getting done by the deadline. Uh, there's no really not many extensions been given out this playoff because because of that like we want to be able to stick to our calendar like it's like we're we're, we're taking our time doing a calendar and then we never stick to it and this is the first step in that so hopefully all the leagues follow 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 suit and also hey so we want our season to be this long our finals to be this day if you plan to win our finals be prepared to play this day clear your schedule and play this day yeah. And because because it's just like if they do make it to the two K league, you can't tell them when you can play. It's either you're gonna you're gonna show up on your scheduled game day, or you're just out of a game. Exactly, and I mean pushback or not, if you, if 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 it was me and I'm on a team headed to the finals, I want to be playing at my best. And I yeah. know none of us are playing at our best at three, four, five a.m. in Absolutely. the morning. Yeah. Right. So like it's we want you know. Uh, the players on the teams want a high quality of play from each other. You know, fans, viewers want an equally high quality of play. And so it's really kind of the best of both worlds and, and hopefully it kind of continues to kind of trend in that direction. Um, outside of that, again, very excited. I'm sure we'll have the eventual champions on WR Weekly next week. Um, sure. Before we sign off, just a quick uh, note of the other side of the WR Select Championship, um, our champions, LA Traffic, they won the title for the Xbox side of the bracket. Um, a little thing about them, Perry, before you can kind of give your thoughts on this, they're back-to-back -back champions, yep. right? So we talk about legit and the Cokies and how difficult it is to, you know, win a championship in a draft league. These guys, the or the people in this organization have done it twice and consecutively. Rankham, Rankham is their GM. And, uh, and, and I think highly of Rankham. Rankham, like we, we were talking during the season, Rankham knows what he's doing. So it's just like, even if they start off struggling, uh, they, I think they started off 0 and 4, 0 and 5 maybe. And he just got his, he, he rallied the troops and got it together. They, they went on a run and they didn't look back. They were a tough team to beat. They beat some good teams, especially in the playoffs and especially down the stretch. So Rankham knows what he's doing. He knew how to rally his guys. When they started 0 and 4, everybody was looking crazy. Like, you plan on repeating with this? And, stuff especially having the last pick in the first round uh because you won the, pre the previous season you have the last pick in the uh, first round so mm -hmm. it's kind of tough but he knew what he was doing and he got his team to perform when it mattered most definitely again a back-to-back -back championship is, is is super impressive and hopefully you know we can sort of pursue that three-peat you know storyline and narrative next year yeah. <laughs> um and, and they could be the first to do that but again, congratulations to uh, the LA Traffic for winning the Xbox Season 6 Championship um, and every player uh, that was on that roster. Um, but with that said, that pretty much does it for us. I mean, next week, WR Weekly Episode 2 will 100% we'll be recapping the results of the WR Championships. Yep. Uh, Perry, man, thank you. Thank you so much for no helping, me, helping us do this. It was great. No problem, man. Thank you so much for having me on, man. This is WR Perry. I'm getting ready to sign off. If you guys need anything WR, make sure that you hit up us on Twitter at WR Pro Am League, um, YouTube WR Pro Am League. Uh, you know, uh, I think I think uh, Chris is gonna actually do the socials. But yeah, man, this is uh, this has been a terrific show. Uh, I'm very excited that you guys have me on. Uh, anything you guys need, you know I'm here for you, man. Thank you so much, Chris. Like yeah. you said, this is our first time at really interacting with each other, and like you said, I look forward to a very fruitful relationship. Yeah, and man, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be awesome. A very quick reminder before we sign off officially to use the hashtag WR Playoffs throughout the rest of um you know the season 29 and season 20 playoff series, um especially leading into the semifinals and finals, we'll be using that hashtag to kind of. Uh, jump into different clips and, and highlights as we stream our games. Um, but that's pretty much it. Again, on behalf of Perry, I'm one on one Chris. This was WR Weekly, and we'll see you next week. Yes, sir.